Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Mehmet Barry, and you are on the Barry Media Show. Barry Media Show is all about entrepreneurship, creation, and leadership. It is the place where guests talk about their skills, challenges, experiences, and success. It is also the place where guests talk about the meaningful and affirmative contribution they provide to the African continent, the African diaspora, and to the world. My guest today is Roderick Fuafu, who is an entrepreneur, software engineer, African startup investor and mentor, online marketing and advertising professional. He is the co-founder and CEO of Heart Nam Tima, Inc., an investment and consulting firm that specializes in mentoring and investing in African startups. He is also the co-founder of Wuesi, a digital intelligence company focused on delivering intelligent digital solutions to help small and medium-sized companies deliver quantifiable and sustainable results by optimizing their digital footprints through increased brand awareness, lead generation, and online sales. Roderick grew up in the tiny African city of Bafusam in Cameroon. He graduated with honors from the University of Ottawa, Canada with a Bachelor of Applied Science in Computer Engineering. Roderick currently lives in Rwanda where he continues to make huge impacts. In this interview, Roderick Fuafu explains in detail how his investment and consultant firm, Heart Namtima, has been engaged in providing investment for African startups, the intricacy involved in funding these startups, and some of the challenges his organization faces in Africa. Roderick is a true legend, a well-rounded human being, and a people person who not only loves connecting with others, but also enjoys learning from them. Without further ado, here he is, the inspirational Roderick Fuafu on the Barry Media Show. Welcome, Roderick. Thank you for being on the Barry Media Show. Thank you for having me. So you are a startup investor, but only in Africa. Is that correct? Uh, I would say yes, but uh, not only in Africa, by the way. So we... We invest at our early age into Jamaica startups and also in Haiti, Haiti startups as well, <clears throat> back in 2012. So we have some pretty good um, initiative over there too as well, but mainly in Africa, yes. You currently live in Canada. How long have you been living in Canada? Is that where your company is based out of? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's where is my base. That's where even I started my entrepreneurial journey, and that's where I started the African journey. So it was in Canada. I've been there since almost over 20 years now. Initially, we, we, we were, our focus was to invest into African startups or projects or technolo te technologies. So it's been now more than uh, roughly nine years. And as we start and as we grow through, um, uh, I will start our journey, we also realized that, you know, uh, the, the continent doesn't need or not only money, but also they need more than just money. Right? They need more than uh, an ecosystem where they can support, mentor, guiding, coach, and so on, just more than money. So we've been ship, shipping our modern, not just money too, but how we can add a mentor, mentor, mentorship dimension, how we can add coaching dimension, how we can add, meaning, meaning connecting Africa need with a specific region, uh, with, uh, with outside the world skills, basically, more than just investing. So how did you become an investor? And then after, you know, my background is basically, so moved to Cameroon, to, to Canada. I did a, a software engineering background uh, degree. And after that, I worked for a few companies, including IBM in Canada, and also a few Canadian startups. And in, back in 2009, I stepped out from, uh, uh, from Nortel. Nortel was one of the biggest Canadian telecom companies that I used to work for. I stepped out I resigned to start my entrepreneurial journey by creating a website where we showcase the video from Five Star Chef in Europe for my business partner back then. And we were earned revenue through advertising. That's how my entrepreneurial journey started. And within the span of three years, we, become, we became the number four worldwide, the most popular food website after RSP.com in the state and Food Network in the state, we were number four, roughly 400,000 unique visitors, unique visitors every single day. And so we grew the company, him and I, to 
a dozen people in Ottawa, in, in Canada, and 15 in US, and 5,000 in Asia, mostly in the um, in Philippines and, 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 and India. So that's why we grow our, 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 our profess venture. And that's why, you know, with that, we, we connect with many advertising players across the world and Facebook, you name it, Glam Media and State and so on. So, and after running that for six years and a half, I was a little bit tired and aiming to do something different. And I stepped out in, uh, for adventure and moved to Silicon Valley. Uh, in the Valley, that's how I realized that the, the the Africa momentum is on, and I want to make sure I'm part of it. And quickly, I realized that the only way as diaspora can make impact is not to build product and deploy in Africa. It's really to see how we can bring capital into Africa, and that's why uh, we position ourselves from the beginning as a uh, as, as an investor, knowing that we will channel we will be channeling all the uh, all the wealth from the West or all, all the all, all, all the or the capital from the West to, to put into Africa tech or ecosystem or, or venture. So I, I, I still don't believe that being an, as diaspora, being an investor is the most valuable and create more impact than just deploy or develop a product to deploy in Africa. So being an investor was a must for us and so on. And also because we knew people too, that way they were, would be interested in Africa in the future, but they need some success story. They need to see people around that have that they went to Africa and built some success story as we were doing. So we pushing ourselves as investor on African market, not just uh, entrepreneur. Because from the beginning we realized that the capital will flow from Western country into Africa. We see to ourselves we have to be the middlemen, meaning we have to be the people in the future guiding those venture, uh, those capital. You know where to invest, how to invest, what's the return, what's going on, and so on. So we position ourselves differently. We say to ourselves, you know what? Let's start our small angel investment using our own funds first to make some build some traction, build some success story, make mistake, use our own funds, and eventually in the future, like in two year, one year from now, we will launch our own our uh, our funds basically a bigger fund more than what we have now. Then in order to do that, let's just go to Africa right now. Back then, eight years ago, to build, to you know. To, not only invest, but also starting preparing the next people who will start Facebook, maybe two years, three years from now. So uh, we're looking for people, not necessarily the venture and what we're interested in, but really the, the, the people around the venture. Do they have a strong vision? Do they have a long-term vision? Can they see beyond Africa, right? Eventually, see how we can coach them, train them, and so on. And in the future, those are people that are going to bet on them to really invest more millions, more billions into them in the future. So basically, we have first phase is to really identify, train, coach. Even though they have seen that venture, you know, we invest in them, we coach them, we show them the best practice of running a business or a startup. And eventually in the future, those are people that we're going to bet on it. So in eight years, we invest into 45 startups. It's ranged for video game in Cameroon, for example, or... Um, you know, a video game, fashion, you know, mobile money, uh, fintech, you name it. So it's very, it's very, it's, it varies. We don't have a specific niche because we strongly believe that thing will, thing will really, uh, we, we will kick off in the future. At this stage, we just want to identify those young, passionate people who are ready to really start Africa and Amazon in the future and so on. So what is the time frame between being accepted for funding and getting the funding? Yeah, usually it's, it's three months. Because we strongly do that in three months, you can see the, someone's behavior, you can see what's going on, you can understand. You can, even though three months is not enough, but from, from our experience, we think that three months will help us you know, to have a better idea of who are the person that we're dealing with. So can he, is there any fit with us? You know, is his value in ours? Is that what we're looking for? His vision and what we're trying to look for in the future? Is that the case? And how we can work together? So all the whole process lasts uh, three months. We're not a typical investor in such a way that, you know, we're expecting us to return. We have to get a return and so on, really. We're building a mindset. We're building a generation where they can know how to run things. They can know how to create. They can know how to think bigger and so on. And also, why not step in in, in their operation? We kind of, you know, make sure that they have everything. So it depends. So, for example, uh, it is a routine call every month sometime. They, uh, it can happen sometimes, you can skip for two months. So it's, it, it depends on venture, but we try not to really be 
too much there. You know, we try to give them space so they can develop themselves. And uh, eventually, when they have a question, we will there to support them and we will there to clarify and see how we can get them uh, move move forward with any issue that they might have. So, can you give a name of two startups in Africa that you have invested in? Yeah, we invest into this uh, video game called uh, Kiro Game in Cameroon. It's a Kiro Game. It's a K I R O O games, and uh, the game came out. That was back in 2012. And the game came out in 2017. And uh, yeah, and they were featured on CNN, Financial Times, Wall Street Journal, you name it. And one, one of the, uh, so Kill Game was the first French made video game by African, African culture and so on. So the game came out in 2017. And uh, they're growing a huge interest from uh, VC in, in London as well. And also Hollywood, Hollywood were in touch with them to see how they can make a movie into the video game concept. That's again to show the world that you know what you know Africa can learn. You know, Africa can inspire the world. So you know to to stop seeing Africa as you know the continent of batting going on and so on. You know we want to educate and show the world that you know great things are happening and coming coming out from from the country from from the continent. The second one, it's uh, Kasi Inside. Kasi K A S I Inside. They are based in. Uh, uh, the, the founder is he's physically based in Toronto. This is a diaspora born venture. Uh, they, they, they are they're in um, Kenya, uh, South Africa, uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, uh, and um, they in six countries in Africa basically. What they do, they provide Africa data, a consumer data basically. So they anything consumer data because we realized from the beginning that. In order for an investor in the future to really tap into African market, they need some reliable data. Basically, what they do, they provide African consumer data, and to be they they were they kind of uh, one Bloomberg, uh, one division of Bloomberg for the future, basically. And speaking of Bloomberg, they signed a huge contract with them. That was uh, end of last year. They're going to source Africa data inside consumer data inside the Bloomberg platform for a year, and so on. So that's, that's one of the success stories that we want to showcase that, you know what, Africa is going, something is happening, so you better to see different things differently and so on by showcasing those, 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 those success stories of ours moving forward. Great. Have you ever invested in a company that failed? Oh, of course. So remember, I told you that we invest overall in 45 projects, I mean, 45 startups, out of which only uh, six plus are going to take off, basically. Meaning that, Bunch of them either fail or either you no know, revenue or either didn't work at all, right? So that's that's our ratio: seven out of forty-five in eight years. Mm-hmm. In some, for us, remember we're building a long-term strategy. Even though some of them are, has failed, but the founder of uh, with us, we have other things that we're working 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 on, and then for the future. So remember, we're not judge. The, uh, the success, our success is not just based on the result, like ROI, or based on what, what happened. It's also based on what uh, the founder, his vision, his ability to learn and build a, a team and so on around. So some, some, some startup founder that in the, in the past they fell, we, we work with them in all the different venture on the continent. So are you guys looking for any partners or you don't need partners? So when we start a journey, we were by ourselves. Because we want to make mistakes using our own fund. It's difficult to make mistakes using people's money and so on. So my partner and I would say, you know what, let's use our own fund to go to Africa, make mistakes, learn and grow and build our network, understand the continent. And some key partner, key investor that we thought they might fit our, our, our value, our, our vision, uh, we didn't upset the, uh, the capital. But however, we helped them channel, we helped them and advise them and give them some vet and serious and diligence company that we're working on to them so they can invest. I also brought two of them last, last January in Africa, basically. So they want me to show them what's at the bottom of the continent. So I brought, I brought two of them, two Canadian investors, to in, Benin, in, in Benin, in Togo, in Ivory Coast, and in, in Rwanda, here in Rwanda. The goal was to, see them, to have them see the bottom of the continent and so on. So at this stage, we're not looking for a partner. But we're working if for partners who have the same vision for our world, like us, you know, share our experience, share our some success story, see how they can co-invest with us 
how they can, uh, uh, you know, try to empower startups that we've been seeing across our path and moving forward. In 2012, you spent a mm-hmm. few months in Silicon Valley where you met people like Steve Wozniak of Apple, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, mm-hmm. Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. So what does it feel like being among these tycoons, these giants, shaking their hands, talking with them? What is your impression of them? I meet them in person. So it's, first of all, you feel like, yeah, Silicon Valley is real. But so you feel, you feel empowered and you feel inspired, right? So what it take to be like them? What it take to be Silicon Valley, what they have built as an ecosystem? And really, you feel inspired, you know, and you feel that it's possible. Everything's possible. And you see, you even, you, the, the way you think, you think bigger. You think bigger, basically. And really, my journey was very uh, interesting what, what, about what I'm, I'm doing today because in the valley, I, tried on, I, I understood why we have such unique space in the world where they call the capital, what is the capital of innovation around the world? What it takes to build an ecosystem unique as a Silicon Valley. It's not just just talent, it's not just money, it's not just university, it's not just it's, it's an entire ecosystem, it's an entire lifestyle. And I my through my journey there, I learned a lot, you know, from those leaders. I remember I remember my best friend Dan Moran was a vice president of the engineering of Facebook. So the last minute he was having a meeting with Mark Zuckerberg. And he called me, said, you know, hey, we we're having, well, that was two days before the IPO. He said, you know what, come over here. So Mark will be here. That's my, uh, that's the opportunity that I had to see Mark, my, my, Mark in person. So it was, it was a very, a very, a very interesting journey, a very inspiring journey. And my mission here in, on the continent, again, is to build a unique ecosystem for Africa, basically. So, so, so it's not just, you know, just, you know it, it build an entire culture of tech around Africa. That's my mission since two years. So how we can work, play on the ground, play on a continent or diaspora or everyone who wants to put the, 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 the skills, the time, the capital or the network to the benefit of Africa tech ecosystem. What is the most valuable piece of information that you can share that is within your expertise? Um, to be a patient in life, basically. A real thing takes time. You know, building a reputation takes time. Building a success story to take time. Building something strong. Building something that will transform generation. Building something that will empower an entire continent, beyond the continent. It takes time, it takes time, and it takes time. And be patient. So what are the everyday challenges you and your company go through? Because people think that we are an investment company. That means we have capital for everyone. You know, so when you receive... In average, 50 emails per day, 50, 50 venture or email, you know, hey, Rodrigo, you know, I have this venture in Sierra Leone. Will you be interested to invest or someone in Nigeria, someone in Senegal, and so on? So, so uh, I always try to figure out a way, how can we put in the mind of those people to see, you know what, is it not, is it not even necessary when you reach us out? Not necessarily asking money, basically. So we try to see how we can, okay, we can bring you more value than just, that's just that money. People would always reach us out in a way that you know, they're expecting money from us, by the way, or they're expecting money from us, whereas we have all the value. So, by the way, uh, one of our partners from Africa Business Angel Network, Tommy Davis, one of the top veterans into Africa tech startup. So, we hear him. And What's his name? Too, uh, Tommy Davis. Tommy Davis. Oh, okay. He created a concept where I support, it was two years ago, called uh, mentor driven capital, you know, capital through mentorship. Because people think that capital is just money, hard, hard, hard money, right? So, capital is also soft, soft capital, like um, the mentorship or skills is very important too, right? We want to also value those on the continent, right? It's not just money, it's also mentor, how to show them the best practice of running, running, running a, a, a structure. Let me give an example. I think back in a few years ago, there was this. There was this guy in Cameroon called Joku. He was stuck on one of them. He was trying to solve the database issue, uh, and uh, for 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 a few months, and he has invested to hire a developer locally, but he couldn't. When he shared with me, I called my buddy in Silicon Valley, who's the guru in database. My dear, during the phone phone call of thirty minutes, the guy solved the three month or six month problem that he was struggling with. Those are value, you know. Remember, it doesn't have to do with money, but you see how he unlocks someone 
you know what I'm, no, no, money doesn't have, doesn't do it, right? So with our network, with our skills, we can also add value to your venture, not necessarily money. You guys invest in technology, is that the case? Not really, not purely technology as per se. For example, this is fashion design clothes. I don't know if you know, noticed that. When I wore every day, went to a meeting and so on, to my African con- conference and so on. So one of the projects, you know, anything fashion design, we invest into that basically. Right, so we want to promote Africa noir and Africa creativity. It doesn't have nothing to do with the technology, but we support we support the, the venture. It's very important for us, but, but mainly technology, yes. But we are open to any venture that can really, you know, put our value, put our know-how, put our, you know, what we are capable of out there. So, how can people get a hold of you? Um, um, mostly on social media, mostly on LinkedIn under my uh, uh, my name, Africa Connects. Africa connects. So I create that, um, uh, I use that ID back, back then because I strongly believe that in what I do, I connect basically. And what I will do in the future too is connecting basically. So connect people, they can make things happen, connecting uh, investors of Asia for Africa to a venture in Africa basically, and vice versa too. Connect African investor to, to African venture basically. So uh, Africa connects, if you search Africa connects on any uh, social media platform, you will, you will, you will, you will, you will see me, and you can reach me out. Great. So before we yeah. end this interview, is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, uh, but I want to add that. So one of the things that we learned through the process too is I realized that the power of African diaspora across the globe, and um, and through traveling around the globe and speaking to different uh, African invest, investment summit from state for the Europe and to Africa. I realized how powerful the, uh, the diaspora into the African transformation. So last year in London, we created what, what I call the Chamber of Commerce for African Diaspora based in London. The goal for this organization is to see how we can channel every African diaspora across the globe, people like me and you and I, to come together in one umbrella and see how we can tap into our strength to transform the continent from abroad. Right? See how we can create our own investment fund, how we can create our own bank, how we can create our own uh, Western Union. Right? So how we can be the voice of Africa outside and so on. And make sure that we empower people, make sure that we can you know, come together to, 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 to do things together. Because I strongly believe that being together is important. You know, we have to collaborate. It's through the collaboration that we can even go further. It's through the collaboration that we can really create more impact, not only on the continent, but also in the community where we live abroad. But also not only between Africa, but also, you know, people from the island, Jamaican, and also people from the island are on board too as well, or African-American who want to learn, you know, who want to have a bridge, use the chamber as a bridge to have access to the continent opportunity. That's what it's about. So, yeah, so looking forward, to, it's, it's, it's ongoing. We, see, we, are, we, are, we, we just turned almost a year now, based in London, and everyone is welcome. Everyone who has Africa at heart, who want to see Africa, transform who wants to africa develop it's all work so i have a one last question i want to ask you though so right now you've been in the on the continent for a while like what advice would you give to someone who wants to invest or start a business in africa right now like what is the first thing you, you would direct them to to do so the real way the real way to really get no you have to get no the data you have nowhere to go how to invest and what to invest on, what country are on top and why. It's only through, you know, try to see if you have any connection locally, you know, see how you can have a local connection on the continent that can advise you, that can guide you on what's going on locally. So try to get your, get your information online. You know, nowadays you have an online tool, but don't rely too much online, right? Try to see how you can have a physical connection locally to get to know the market to get to know the people, to get to know the trend, to get to know what's going on in the situation, the market too. And the news too as well. Try to see how you can use news. And so also rely on African diaspora, basically. Because remember, they, they're from there. They have also a better idea. Also the connection too. So if you have friends from African diaspora, maybe ask them, you know, hey, what's what, your country? What's going on? What's the trend? What's, what, what's, what do you have there as opportunity? And try to see how you can get in touch and build your network and build your relation. My dear, Africa is the future. And you have to start, make sure that you start building your network, building your knowledge on Africa going forward. You know, and you know, try to even see how you can travel over there too. A physical, a physical trip on the continent. 
to choose one country, go there and feel it, go there and interview people, go there and feel what's like to be in Africa. That's the first step. And also know, know that, uh, don't expect, as I always tell to my, uh, to my friend, connection, don't expect to be successful or to make money in five, four, three or four years. If, you have inten- if your intention is to make money, quick money in two, three years, I want to advise you to do so. Really, tapping into Africa market, it will take long-term vision. It will take long-term game plan. Not just one, two, three, or four years and so on, right? Put yourself a long-term game plan and execute slowly, gradually, building your network, building your knowledge base. You know, rely on company like Cassie Inside to get the data inside what's going on. Rely on, on company like Asoko Inside that we are part of. They, they provide data insight for African entrepreneur for African enterprise, basically. So you know, get to know those those connection or those network and know better about the continent. Get inside and step slowly, slowly implement a strategy. But again, it would also take a physical trip on the continent based on the information that you had prior to, to moving. Mm-hmm. And you can also contact us. So, you know, we can share our experience of nine year experience and so on to, to you. Great, great. Hey, thank you, Roderick, for a great interview. Thank you for sharing all this great information. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. It's very important to have such tool like yours where we can voice our journey, where we can voice our our heart, our vision. That can if that if that can inspire even one person, that mean that would be my that would be my that would, that would make my day. That would make my make me proud, right? So if my story, if through your through your channel can really uh, help any potential uh, people who are interested to do something in Africa or whatever, that would, that would, that, 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 you know, that, that, that's the ultimate, ultimate goal, basically. I thank you for giving that chance to express and share my experience. Thanks to my guest, Roderick Fuafu. Thanks to you for listening. The Barry Media Show gives you information to power your dream. The Barry Media Show was written and produced by me, Mamadou Barry. You can find me on Instagram at Barry Medias and on Twitter at Barry Medias. Please stop by and say hi. And please tune in next week for another great interview. Mm-hmm.